Community Camp Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are three guests, Kathy Pinkham, our Director of Wellness. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Diane Simmons, our Director of Community Education Planning and Communications. Thank you for being here, Diane. And welcome to Chris Brumbach, who's been here before, our Director of Student Development. Appreciate you being here. I, I was realizing this fall that, that one of the things the Needham Schools aspires to do, and I think we really hit a home run this past year, is to gather feedback from our constituent groups, parents, staff, students. We gather a lot of feedback, and I think in talking to each one of you, um, I realize now we have, we have piles of, of data, or uh, a lot of data stored anyhow on, on uh, our, our devices. So I wanted us to talk about that and, and what it means, and maybe Chris, just beginning off with you, can you provide maybe a framework for all this data, this surveying, and this feedback. Um, what's, what's the context? Where, what, have, what, have, what have we been trying to do over time, and when did this begin, and, mm -hmm. and what are we collecting? So the district has really always been intent on getting feedback from parents in the community, and particularly from our students in grades 7 to 12 through the Metro West Adolescent Health Survey. The parent survey has, was going on on a biennial basis probably since two th the year 2000. Mm -hmm. Let's say it was around 2000. Oh, Is that about when it started? Yeah. Uh, so every other year we were surveying our parents. Um, the Metro West Adolescent Health Survey has been going on since about 1994, right, Kathy? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, every other year, our students in grades 7 to 12 have been surveyed by the Metro West Health Foundation in Framingham, along with 16 other surrounding communities, to look at our students um, perceptions of themselves in terms of at-risk behaviors like alcohol use, marijuana use, their physical activity, their dietary habits, um, their mental health, uh, sense of themselves in terms of their mental healthiness, health. So that those uh, surveys have always gone on. What was different this year is that we, we realized over the last couple of years that we haven't really been able to pull this data together to know how our students, staff who have not been surveyed over those years, and our parents, uh, how they are all feeling about some of the same questions and the same uh, items that we, sh we have concerns about. So this past year for the first time, Diane Simmons uh, worked with several of us in the district to come up with a survey that could actually be administered to students from grades three to 12, staff from grades 3 to 12, and parents uh, of grades 3 to 12 students um, in our district. And we had a tremendous, tremendous result from that administration. But the beauty was that Diane linked all those survey questions with our mental health adolescent, with our Metro West Adolescent Health Survey, so that we now have a lot of data points on the same questions from students, staff, and parents. So, so what I'm hearing is that for years, really, Needham has gathered a lot of data, and, and that provides an opportunity for trending and, mm -hmm. and to see where things are and, and patterns. But what is unique this past year, uh, Diane, and if you can talk a little bit about this, how, how, did, how did we kind of merge some of this data? I mean, we had these different surveys going out, but somehow you were able to bring not every single one of them together but you, you, you brought some of the concepts and ideas together. What, what, how, did, how did you do that? What did that look like? And what was the response rate? The, the framework we used was the district goals. We were already operating in a, in a way to look at um, what, what's critical in the Needham School District. And so we just really categorized these questions under goal one, the academic standards, or goal two, the SEL, and that involved what Chris was mentioning, the Metro West data, as well as our own questions, and the infrastructure for goal three. And it was the district goals that really helped us organize the information. The, the response rate was wonderful. Um, in, in past years, the parents were only surveyed through the district survey, and the response rate was in the low 20 percent. And this year, we had a 52 percent response rate. We had 2,179 parents respond to the survey. I mean, survey. That's, that, was, that was pretty remarkable. It that, was that, remarkable. I think districts doing this, and not many districts do this right. in the first place, would aspire to get a 20 percent <coughs> response rate. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Needham's families are committed to, to pursue this uh, 50% is pretty pretty remarkable. It is. So we, we really feel that we 
hear what the parents are trying to tell us. We have a, a wonderful cross sample from all of the schools, and it was a credit to um, the school administrations getting involved in this process that made this possible too. But in addition to the 52% of the parents, comparable questions were asked of the students. So we had almost 3,000 students take this survey and over 500 staff. So those three pockets of information is what we compared, contrasted, so we have a better understanding of, of what the needs are within the school. So now, just to make sure as I'm sorting through this, we still do the Metro West survey, mm -hmm. though. So uh, it is related to the, the broader survey that you were able to put pull together, but we still have the standalone survey that has results that, that presumably helps us learn about some of our programming in, in some of the areas that you're involved in, Kathy. Absolutely. For years, we've taken a look at the results of the student self-reporting results to say, okay, what behaviors do we need to look at uh, in terms of curriculum and instruction and creating programming? So, so that does stand alone. We still use that. But this is a nice way to say, you know, what's parents' perspectives of these kinds of things? And, of course, teachers who work with these kids every day. What we found was we actually asked some of the same kinds of questions or the, uh, sometimes the exact question in our student survey through uh, the district survey as were asked on the adolescent health survey. And lo and behold, we basically got exactly the same results, which was another uh, another thing that helped us see that, in fact, the student self-report is pretty reliable. So We're getting a, the same kind of results. what's an example of something that we tried to, we, we tried to correlate with the, the parent survey and with the students in the Metro West? Yeah. Um, so, do you have one you can pull out really quickly? Well, uh, word I, for I word? Think, I think the, the stress measure is mm -hmm. the one that we talk about a yep. lot. Yep. Um, and this helps us by taking the district information and the Metro West mm -hmm. LS. In the health survey, we expand the look so we can look at stress from the lower grades. Middle school is where Metro West picks up and, and the high school where Metro West complements and, and the results are similar. So uh, on the district survey, uh, um, we also get the parent perspective. Um, and so we know that um, this is across the district. The parents, um, the question being, my child just feels stressed or overwhelmed by school and 30% and of the parents are responding that way. But when you compare that to how the students feel and, their, and the report of the staff on their students, they're saying that 48% of the students, almost half of the students, um, have this feeling of stress or being overwhelmed by school. So I want to I want to pause for a moment and talk about this this business of stress. And I, you know, interestingly, Kathy, I'm just thinking too. You and your team recently completed a comprehensive uh, program review of physical education and wellness in the Needham schools that will be presented to the school committee soon. That's right. Um, and I know you surveyed some students as well. And I think this business of stress and programming. I, I want to talk about this business of stress. It came up in, 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 all, in, in all the surveys in different ways that there was a concern among students um, and parents about the, the stress that their, their students are experiencing. Needham has devoted a lot of time and attention um, to that, that idea, that, that concern of stress and trying to build resilience mm -hmm. in our children. Um, uh, for a variety of reasons, but certainly this community has experienced tragedy and, and we're trying to learn from that. And um, wh what's going on? What's, what's happening with this business of stress? What, what are some, some of the takeaways? Well, you know, I think uh, we have to be really careful about these results because we know that in the surveys, the way that it's worded in the surveys, in the, in the adolescent health survey, the question is, um, within the last Life has been very stressful for me within the last 30 days. 30 days yeah. So that's, that's the literally question. the question. Okay. Life has been very stressful within, within the last 30 days. And then students get to say, uh, strongly agree, agree. Strongly disagree, strongly disagree. Strongly disagree, disagree. Mm -hmm. So um, it doesn't really define stressful. It goes on to ask uh, what the student finds most stressful. School situations, social situations, family situations. Um, what are some of the other? There are, there are other relationships things. Relationships. Other yeah, things. Yeah, there are, there are, yeah. And so we also know from that that students actually mark school as the source of, that's the largest so source identified as, as stressful to our students from 7 to 12, so from grade 7 to 12. So we know that, but we still don't know exactly what stressful means. So one of the questions we have, and, and we believe 
I mean, stress is part of life. The question is, how do you yeah. respond to the right. stress? Right. Right. And so our goal, and Kathy's goal through wellness, our goal through, the, through our social emotional learning program is to help students as young as preschool figure out what do I do when I'm upset about something? How do I solve the problem that's respond? causing the, the stress? How do I respond? So we're trying to build those resiliency skills all along, which I think we do a really great job yeah. of that. But I think we believe that, that we're living in an era of very high expectations of uh, fast people moving. are very, it's fast moving, people yeah. are very anxious about what's going to happen next. You know, students have said to us, if I don't get into the right college, if I don't get the good grades to get into the right college, you know, my future is doomed. I mean, we've gotten mm -hmm. words like that from students. Mm -hmm. there, so, so we know that there is a lot of stress. What we don't know is how well kids are coping with it. So, right. so we really need to dig at this data. We don't quite know. And yeah, Kathy, we, also, you know. we also know that kids are very highly programmed, or some, some would even say over-programmed. They, they have a lot going on. They're doing, they go from one thing to the next to the next. Uh, well, during school, after school? During school, weekends, after or? school, weekends, yeah. summers. Um, and they're always plugged in. So, so when they're not, when they're not um, even when they have quote-unquote downtime, they've got a computer going, they're texting friends, they're planning the next event. Mm -hmm. There, there's no downtime. They, they, you know, we, we have kids who are living in a brand new world that, that we can only imagine what it must be like for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to find a quiet moment to just settle and, and to de-stress, mm -hmm. that's not part of their program. Mm -hmm. So part of that is to educate them a little bit to have a better balance between being on the go and, and quiet downtime and how, and how to live in that quiet downtime, which, which they don't know how to do mm -hmm. anymore. I mean, Diane uh, had, on the survey, had obviously had places for comments for parents, staff, and students to make comments on, on every section of, this, of the district survey. And w there are some really interesting quotes about stress, and I don't know if, I, if it would be appropriate for me to share Please some do. of these, but for instance, one adult, uh, one parent on the survey said, stress and high expectations are the smog we breathe in and out every day. No matter how we try to de-emphasize the pressure to achieve specific outcomes, it is not hidden from our kids. And then there's a student perspective, and this is a quote, college is my only option after high school. And another quote, if I don't attend the right college, I won't get a good job. And then of course, there, you know, as Kathy's talking about, you know, sort of the culturally imposed pressures to be high achieving, to be perfect. Right. You know, so I think we do live in a community where, um, uh, you know, the good news is, I think parents, teachers, and, uh, and administrators are recognizing this as a possible problem for kids, and we're trying to do something about it. So, Diane, will we, will we use this information around stress or coping or, you know, talking about resiliency? Will we, so we have this data, we have this feedback. How are we going to use that, particularly as it relates to stress, and, and, and Kathy and Chris, you may have a perspective, but how, how will you be able to work with folks to, to understand this, to, to impact uh, the lives of our children and programs? It's already happening, which is the wonderful part. Tying this data into the school council's work, of the school improvement plans. So I've had some um, meetings with a, a, a number of the school councils. They've embraced the data. Um, they've started generating ideas about what can we do as a school system, as, as parents, as students, as staff working together um, for educational purposes, for a better understanding of stress. And, and as Kathy taught me, you know, what's good stress, what's, what's um, stress that gets in the way of your being able to do your job as a, as a student. Um, so the school improvement plans that will be brought to the school committees this year are going to come back with some of the ideas that the school councils are thinking about right now. You, you remind me that, that so we have this district-wide data and, and the Metro West survey uh, is 7 through 12, so that's two schools, mm -hmm. Pollard and the high school. The parent, staff, student survey though was 312 and all eight schools and so there's data for each individual school, mm -hmm. and it may look a little different. Uh, there's mm -hmm. some consistent themes, but it may look a little different. And so you're working with the individual school councils to help unpack and That's understand right. what true. their results say. We're looking at it at a school level. We're looking at it at a grade level. We're looking at it from a gender, um, because there are some issues for the, our female students versus our male students. Sure. 
So um, it becomes very personal when we go to the school councils and, and speak with the principals, um, you know, what, what's happening within their school community. And so it, what, is, it, it is a little different. Each well, sh 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 share maybe a little anecdote or what's been, as you've been going to the school councils, mm -hmm. talking to them, what, have you, what, have you, what are the reactions you've heard or the questions or, or concerns or ideas about some of the results? Um, uh, things like stress, um, um, you get uh, different perspectives from the, the uh, student staff and, and, um, and the parents. And at the high school school council, it was very interesting how um, there were four students on the school council at the high school, and, 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 and the whole room turned to the students because we feel really accountable to them. And so when they generated ideas, and it could be as simple as the stress in the cafeteria, because if you don't you know, get in the right line, know how to navigate, you can't find the table, you don't fit in, it's a whole yeah, um, yeah. cascade of things that happens to the student. And there are easy trafficking solutions that were talked about, right. just generated by a student giving a day in my life. <laughs> So uh, j transitioning for a second from the, uh, uh, because stress and, and, and coping and resiliency is something that we are absolutely focused on through our social emotional learning programs and really what we're trying to do K through to pre-K through 12 with our children and our families. So is the community through, through John Mandelman's services and, and uh, uh, the Department of Health. Um, the survey results have some real highlights about what people are excited about and jazzed up about the schools. What are some of the takeaways there about what parents and staff and students perceive regarding the schools that, that are, are really uh, exciting? Thank you. I'm glad you put that out there because that was our intent too. We want to measure progress against the district goals and that means we're doing really well in, in each of those fronts. So for, for goal one on advanced standards-based learning, all three parties, parents, students, and staff, agree that the school sets high academic standards. Um, the, the elementary school students under t understand that teachers want me to do well. All the scores in that arena are really high. By the same token, that whole feeling of the staff care about how much students learn, or from the student's point of view, teachers care about how much I learn, that score is very high. And when it comes to the social, emotional, uh, wellness, and citizenship skills, there's this whole feeling of being welcome in the school, and, and that's reflected from the parents and the students and the staff, the, the staff feeling that it's a good place to work and learn. Um, and and um, the whole feeling of safety and, and working well with, with other students, all that is very strong within, across the district. And then we have for goal three, our infrastructure. And we have people you know, speaking very highly about our library and media centers and our nursing services and, and district administration and even power schools. So there, there are you know, some of the tools that we have and, and the way that we service um, our school community, those things are very strong. As I recall, the results also um, reflect a, a question perhaps or an interest from parent, the parent perspective in trying to figure out how they can engage their child's teacher more. And I think this was more of a, a secondary school um, issue with parents, not necessarily um, all parents. Mm -hmm. That parents wanted to see, is there more information I can get about my child? Mm -hmm. what, did, what, did, what have we learned about that? Well, well we learned that, that there's a gap between um, how staff believe that they're coming through for um, providing information to parents and where the parents are at. So the question, for the staff was um, staff help parents understand the strengths and needs of their child and it was like 95 percentile positive. On the f on, and from the parents point of view rolling up all the schools together only 68 percent of the parents think that the staff help them understand the strengths and needs of their child. So we really see that there's an opportunity for us to come through more and give more um, of the information the parents are looking for. Some of it is more information for social emotional learning because I don't get enough feedback there. And some of it is a request for uh, more direct interaction with the teachers. The other um, uh, aspect of, of surveying, getting feedback is, you know, working, w working with the community and, and the Needham um, uh, Coalition for Youth Substance Abuse Prevention also surveyed parents. Um, not sure if it involves students. It did involve students, I think. Maybe no, it was, it was, it was just, just parents. Just parents, just parents about some of their perceptions. And, and Kathy, you shared some of those, and, and you've looked at some of that data. What does what what some of that data, um, uh, what does that tell you as you think about programming and what our kids need in the schools. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting to look at parents' perceptions. That you know, most parents, <laughs> as we would expect, don't want their child to use alcohol or marijuana at all. Yet um, we have um, we have 
percentage of our kids. We have, um, let's see, 35 percent of our kids reported that they had used alcohol within the last 30 days, while 19 percent reported that they had used marijuana in the last 30 days. So I think the key kind of conversation with parents is around this issue of access. When they asked students and parents um, where kids were getting alcohol and marijuana, they were both had the same three areas listed. They get it at parties, they get it from a friend not associated with the party, um, or they get it at home without their parents' knowledge. So I think, you know, in our programming we, we already do uh, communication with parents through homework assignments. And um, another interesting point was that parents recall having a conversation with their children about their guidelines and their rules and regulations around substance abuse. Yet students didn't recall it quite to the same degree. Mm -hmm. So I think parents said, well, I've had the talk, uh, but kids say, yeah, you know, they haven't talked to me. So I think the, the message to parents is you've got to talk, but you've got to keep on talking. Mm -hmm. So if we could integrate a little bit more consistent conversations, homework assignments that kind of initiate a, a reason or an opportunity for kids to talk to their parents with some basic questions, I think that might be helpful in our, in our, to our curriculum to just pick that up a little uh, bit I, more. I think that's a wonderful idea. I know that when we, we've uh, talked about and we provide a, a, um, in, in our health education and, and, and sex education throughout the um, system, the developmental program, uh, one of the, some of the homework assignments are to engage parents, ch children engaging their parents about some of these questions because they, they go down to fundamental va family values and, and relationship issues and uh, it, it, that's really where the conversation needs to happen and to the degree we can help spur that conversation I think it's helpful. I do, I'll, I'll take this moment to maybe get a little, uh, uh, maybe a little off the reservation here. I'm, I'm concerned with the advent of the uh, you know new laws regarding marijuana and the, the decriminalization of it and also the, the medical marijuana health dispensaries how that will muddy muddy the landscape for students trying to figure out well you're telling me here it's bad and wrong right. and over here it's medicine and it's okay and and well this isn't against the law so I I think we have a challenge ahead to to have a consistent message that that uh, you know drugs are interfere with learning and because to me that's what you boil it down to um, and so I don't mean to take all the time with that but I had to get that out there it's maybe that will be a, for a, a future conversation that will will uh, will have to have but I'm glad that we have those results because they you know they, they these things tie together which is exactly brilliantly what you tried to do so that we can learn the story about these uh, these uh, survey results um, what Chris, one of the things we also learned from the survey um, is we, we got some information about bullying mm -hmm. and some of the perceptions around bullying, which is on folks' minds, uh, certainly in Massachusetts in the last few years. Uh, but I think there was some good news there mm -hmm. about what, what students and parents perceive as happening. So what, what does that tell us? Yep. Uh, there was some good news in the Metro West Adolescent Health Survey results. Since 2008, uh, the amount of the number of students who have reported that they've been victimized uh, by bullying in the in the last 12 months has been on a steady decline. So that uh, we are really really happy with that. It's on a, a steep decline. However, those students claiming that they've been victims of cyberbullying has remained steady at both the middle school and the high school, with actually a slight increase at the middle school since 2008. So, uh, you know, we are really concerned about cyberbullying. Obviously, that's happening outside of the school, probably more than inside, but it gets brought into the schoolhouse, and then uh, it can cause real problems yeah. for learning and, uh, and teaching in the schoolhouse. So it, we're happy with the decline, of, uh, but we are concerned about the cyberbullying. We also noted in the data this year that the uh, number of female students at both middle school and high school who are claiming to have been victimized by bullying or cyberbullying is substantially higher than male students who have claimed to be victimized. And that's another thing we really want to poke into. We want to work with students here at the high school and the middle school and figure out, help us understand what that means and how can we help the female students in both locations to be to be stronger and to be able to to blow the whistle if they have and to. So what do, what do we think? What do we think that's about? 
I mean, is it, is it a developmental thing? Is it society and it's just something well, we have to cope with? I mean, I, I don't know what... Yeah, you know, it, it, is, it is absolutely similar to other communities. So Needham is not different from other Metro West communities in yeah. that way. We know from the research out of, out of the Mass uh, Aggression Reduction Center at Bridgewater State University that uh, the incidence for females uh, claiming bullying victimization is much higher. Um, girls and boys' perception of bullying is very different, and, and what girls do is oftentimes hidden, much more subtle, and uh, sort of a behind the scenes, more secretive. It's a little bit harder to, for anyone to know what's happening. Boys are generally, it's much more boisterous and out there. Yeah, yeah. And a little so, bit more in cities, uh, perhaps. Yeah, than girls. I think yeah. boys happen to respond to each other more on a physical basis yes. with name calling, and girls, it's more social and emotional. Mm -hmm. It's it, and it and it's a hurt that comes from a different place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we are concerned about that, and we certainly are concerned. Uh, you know, we know from our own experience that uh, uh, girls can get caught up in some very uh, confusing, difficult situations. Um, we also believe that, that some of our students with disabilities may be victimized at a higher rate than our students uh, who do not have disabilities. So that's another area of concern for us, to make sure we are proactively teaching the skills to students with disabilities who may need skill teaching in order to avoid uh, bullying situations. It's wonderful what the middle school has already done. They mm -hmm. kicked into their curriculum on bullying very early in the school year. Mm -hmm. Last year, I know that they did it, it was later. later. Mm -hmm. So, and I think part of that was in result is a result of looking at so. the survey results. Yep, it was. And uh, that's that's uh, yep. well, that's great. And I you just uh, Diane, I want to remember. I want you to remind me. Um, besides meeting with school counselors, you've obvi you've talked to all the principals. You've provided a lot of data to all the principals, and you've had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them about the results. Mm -hmm. The, the goal being, f first of all, is comfort level with understanding what the, what the story is in their school, sure. but also to identify those items that they, that they want to work on with their s councils, with their staff. Uh, you can get to a point of being on data overload, and the intent of this whole exercise is to find the areas that emerge, um, what I refer to it as is the loudest voice. If we look at, at things that are um, echoed in the parents, in the student, and in the staff populations, then we know it's a real issue. And it's those things that emerge from the data that we want to um, identify and then begin to plan on interventions. And so sometimes in a school it just gets down to three or four items that they're going to work on um, with the intent of um, not only putting some actions into place, but to make sure that they communicate what they're doing. Because we want to thank those who spoke up and point to us in a direction so we understand where we need to go from here. Well, it, it, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of data. Um, and I, before I forget, I want to make sure that folks who are watching know they can go to the Needham Public Schools website. And on the front page of the website, they can click on and, and get a copy of these results. Mm -hmm. um, certainly speak with any one of us if they have a question. But that information is available on the district's website, um, all of the survey data and information. The story is that, that parents, staff, and students think very highly of the Needham schools based on the survey results. We're, we're very excited about that. They believe we have high expectations and the right kinds of programs. At the same time, there are some, some we're concerned about some of the issues around stress and stressors for our students and, and our staff and we'll continue to work on the issue of bullying and, and some behaviors that may be unsafe or unhealthy um, regarding alcohol and, and drugs. That's, that's in there that we have to continue to unpack and understand. Um, I think, Diane, you put this in my head and I've said it a few times. We will use these results to improve our um, opportunities and programs for students. We hear you. We hear you. We appreciate uh, uh, parents and students and staff taking the time to really share these results. Um, so thank you very much for uh, continuing to work with the results as we improve the Needham schools. I appreciate it. And thanks, folks, for joining us.